still use today. I think the bronze chariots were not only an unprecedented achievement at the period, but also an achievement that could not be surpassed by any in the later dynasty and eras. The chariots and horses are the largest find of fine bronzeware discovered in the history of world archaeology. But the Emperor's chariots are not alone in revealing the sophisticated technology and engineering in use more than 2,000 years ago. Every single soldier of the Imperial Guard was armed. Archaeologists at the site have unearthed an array of weapons including spearheads, crossbow bolts, crossbow trigger mechanisms, blades of dagger axes that would have been mounted on three-meter poles, and almost meter-long swords that are still razor-sharp. The sheer number of weapons suggests that vast factories and workshops were in operation on a level of industrialization to match the factories of modern industrial cities. With meticulous detail, each weapon was cast and modeled to its standard shape and then filed, chiseled, drilled and polished. But there's one question that remains behind the discoveries of these marvelous ancient weapons. Why, after 2,000 years, do these bronze weapons still glitter? And how did the ancients create such metals that still preserve their strength and sharpness? Using state-of-the-art electron probe microanalysis, archaeologists believe that the key to unlocking this ancient mystery may lie in the discovery of a dark grey layer covering the weapon's surface. Incredibly, the layer has been identified as chromium, a highly complex protective layer that wasn't developed in the West until the 1930s. 2,000 years ago, in the Qin era, they'd already mastered the use of chromium. In the modern world, the technology to oxidize chromium was invented in Germany in the 1930s and in America in the 1950s. In China, this was put into practice very skillfully. It is a remarkable achievement. As research into the weapons continues, will further discoveries be made that will cause us to reopen the history books on the development of highly complex materials? Despite the incredible advancement of the weaponry, it is the terracotta army itself that remains a mystery to modern scholars. How were the soldiers mass-produced on such an enormous scale? and to such an exquisite level of craftsmanship and casting skill. This accomplishment has stood the test of millennia. The making of the terracotta warriors is a real example of how China ran a semi-industrial society. In order to build this tomb, the emperor summoned 700,000 people to work at the site, and they probably worked for 10 years, possibly longer. This massive labor force is the modern-day equivalent of 40 car factories. Its organization alone must have required extraordinary skill and foresight. In Lingtong province, close to the emperor's tomb, a replication company has undertaken the challenge of recreating the warriors using ancient materials. I think it is a very difficult thing to do even nowadays. To make figures in the ancient time was much more complicated. Using the clay roll production method at the time, it would take 20 days for the whole process. Once the clay is rolled, the artist builds the main structure of the warrior's body. Each figure is then sculpted with armor and his own facial expression. Modern-day workshops repeating the production process have found that each warrior figure requires on average 130 kilos of clay, meaning that the craftsmen who created the terracotta army needed in the region of well over a thousand tons of clay. No kilns have so far been discovered at the site and the firing process remains an ancient enigma for archaeologists. Some scholars now believe that the moulds of the warriors were encased within a temporary shell and were fired using a traditional kiln technique that reached temperatures of over 500 degrees. 
A project of this scale at the time would have required large kilns. But it's a great shame that none have been discovered so far. Once the temperature has climbed to its maximum, the mud surface of the temporary shell cracks, allowing hot air to glaze and harden the figure. The results after removing the shell are remarkable and offer a fascinating insight into the advanced understanding of ceramic technology that was developed in ancient China over 2,000 years ago. What other mysteries will archaeologists uncover at this spectacular site? Ancient China was not only responsible for developing industrial machines and practices, for there was one inventor during the Song Dynasty who created a machine that is nothing short of stunning. This machine was to cement China's reputation as being at the forefront of ancient technology. It was known as the Cosmic Engine, the ancient world's astronomical computer. Although the inventors of ancient China developed a vast range of mind-boggling technologies, there is one invention that stands alone as the embodiment of Chinese expertise in science and engineering. And as was the case with the Romans and the Greeks, it was built by a Chinese innovator who was way ahead of his time. A master of precision technology and a brilliant all-round engineer, his name was Su Song. Su Song's most amazing invention was so complicated that for centuries its workings were an enigma to engineers and scholars. It was simply called the Cosmic Engine. In effect, a huge, water-controlled, astronomical cosmic computer. It was such an incredible feat of engineering and scientific knowledge that few Westerners believed it could have existed. Su Song's water-driven cosmic engine was created in 1092 AD. It was considered to be one of the most splendid achievements in the history of ancient Chinese inventions. Su Song's complex mechanism was designed to calculate time, not just hours and minutes, but weeks, months and seasons. The ancient Chinese understood that the calendar reflects the way the Earth moves around the Sun. But what makes this machine truly stand apart is that the cosmic engine also calculated the way the Earth and planets move through space. Furthermore, the ancient Chinese believed that the movements of the stars were closely related to the destiny of the country and its rulers. This 13th century observatory in Henan province is the oldest surviving observatory in China. Even today, when the sun reaches its zenith, rays beam down this central drain. After the rule of the Yuan dynasty unified China, he wanted to improve the development of agriculture. They want to make a reform of the old calendar so they can know the time when the farmers plant the corn. And every day he made the shadow of the sun and made some recorder of the changes of the sun. Then according to the recorder, he made out a calendar. The calendar tells us it will take 365 days, 5 hours, 49 minutes and 12 seconds for the sun to go around the earth. But two centuries before this impressive observatory was built, Su Song was well on his way to designing and then building his astronomical computer. This machine was not only to calculate the passage of the stars and the earth in order to tell time, it was to reveal to the world the technological sophistication of China. This was a monumental task. How did Su Song realize such an ambition? The cosmic engine is a huge 12 meter tall apparatus and very complicated inside. It includes four major systems built up by more than 400 parts. It is a masterpiece of mechanical design and manufacturing. Today, we know exactly how this mechanism was built because Su Song left us detailed blueprints in his treatise called A New Design for a Mechanized Armillary Sphere and Celestial Globe. The book was written 900 years ago. 
This book is very precious to us today. It gives us the original blueprint, so researchers can clearly see the configuration of this ancient apparatus. The script contains 47 illustrations. These include all the parts and their assemblage. The Science and Technology Museum in Beijing, using the machine's original blueprint, has built a fully accurate reconstruction. The computer looked like a tower. The whole mechanism was five stories tall. The front of the tower was a pagoda structure, with each of the five stories having a door through which mannequins appeared ringing bells and gongs and holding tablets to indicate the hours and other times of the day and night. But how did it work? What ingenious innovations and technological developments were involved? A celestial globe showing the movement of the stars inside the tower turned in synchronization with a sphere just above it. As the celestial globe turns, so does the sphere. This meant that the analysts and engineers using the computer could compare and cross-reference between both globes and record multiple data. All of the time indicators were controlled by the same giant machinery that simultaneously turned the sphere and the globe. Within the mechanism is the earliest example of an escapement in a machine, a concept essential to modern mechanical clockwork. In any form of clock-based machinery, power must be delivered to the mechanism in a precise fashion that can be accurately regulated. The rationing of power is the function of this escapement and is something Su Song successfully achieved. Su Song included a cogged wheel in the system. Connected to this was a stopper that only allowed the cog to rotate at a specific rate. By stopping the rotation briefly, and then allowing it to continue at a precise, regular frequency. It is this ingenious system that allowed the invention of Western clocks centuries later. And in fact, it is the periodic stopping and releasing of the escapement that causes the ticking sound of any clock or timer today. Another ingenious aspect to the cosmic engine was its power source, a great scoop wheel using water and turning all the shafts, working the various devices. This ancient super machine ran from the 11th century until it was destroyed by political enemies of the Song dynasty. The cosmic engine is considered by some scholars to be the greatest mechanical achievement of the Middle Ages anywhere in the world. The Song dynasty left a legacy to science and technology, engineering and industrialization that changed the world irreversibly. Although ancient Chinese history is littered with evidence of complex machines, many ingenious designs were literally inconceivable to Westerners of the time.